Hi there. It's a beautiful fall day here in Virginia and I'm going to be doing one of my favorite things. I am going to be unwrapping the bee straws, mason bee straws that I've harvested from around the area and get to see what is inside. And I just thought I'd let you know when I start this is what I use. I always use an old cookie sheet because there is, you know, a lot of pollen and other mud and stuff, mud and crud, so you want to have that handy. And then I have a little pair of, um, usually a little pair of tweezers or a little pair of manicuring scissors. These scissors on the left are kind of cool ones I bought especially for this, but a little pair of manicuring scissors would work great. The tweezers, obviously a magnifying glass because you find really cool stuff. And just maybe some pair of uh, pliers that you can, needle nose pliers, so you can reach in and pull those, those uh, straws out if need be, if they're really stuck. But mostly you should just need a little dowel like this one. If you have one of my bee houses, I always include one. But it's a 5 16 inch uh, wood dowel, and it just helps to push the inner nesting straw out of the cardboard uh, protector sleeve without smushing the bee cocoons that are inside so it's important it's the right size because it has to push on the straw rather than on the bee cocoons needless to say. Uh, I also have a sharpie I'll show you what I use that one for and if you're blind like me you might want to grab a pair of glasses and then I also always have a pad whoa it's windy my awesome iPhone and a pad and paper and if you want to make some notes about what you found in there so you can compare it to next year and know what to do differently. It's always a good idea to have a little, little data sheet perhaps or you just make some notes on a pad. So now we can get started. Okay so we're all set. I've got now I've taken my nesting tubes out of my bee house and I've got all my tools that I might need over here ready to go. I also have some containers, little, um, just anything little. If you want to separate your males from your females, um, that's what these are for. I just do one for males, one for females, and then I also have one for uh, non-native horn face species in case you want to separate the non-natives. And then I just always keep, I think they're just so cool, all the mud dividing, you know, little dividers in the walls from the brood chambers people like to see them and I think the colors are amazing so then and then I just have another one where I keep you know if I find something unusual or I don't know I don't recognize it I can put it in there and next year you know you can just watch see what what emerges from these uh, interesting little cocoons but we'll talk more about that later so let's get started this is the fun part 